Day 3278 of Flint's man-made water crisis. Nine years ago today, under the state's emergency manager law, the decision was made to make the Flint River the city's water source in an effort to save money. Then that corrosive water wasn't properly treated, causing lead to leach from pipes and into people's drinking water, creating one of the biggest man-made disasters in American history. TV5's James Felton joins us live in Flint, where many will forever live with the scars of that fateful switch. James? It may have been nine years since that fateful switch, but residents here tell me it feels like yesterday. Every time my daughter uh, gets in the shower, she'll break out in hives. So, um, they itch her, they get, some of them get real, real big, and they surely are from head to toe. And that's why nine years after the onset of the Flint water crisis, Jolena Freeman doesn't trust the vehicle city's water. She tells me her concerns over it have given her high blood pressure. You just get tired of worrying about the water. You know, I would just like to just cut my water on and go get a glass of water, but I can't. I gotta go through all these steps to get bottled water into my cup. Another resident, Christina Say, believes Flint's water almost killed her. I was so poisoned, I was down to 99 pounds. Say tells us she got a procedure that saved her life. It's called chelation treatment. It removes the heavy metals from your body in a safe process. It kind of like wraps around them and grabs hold and pulls it out of your arteries. It's good for any kind of toxins, not just lead and copper. Say showed up at a nine-year water crisis event to promote chelation treatment. She thinks people in Flint aren't being told about it. I'm glad to be here, but I'm sad to see nothing's changed. As for Freeman, she doesn't expect her blood pressure to get lower anytime soon. Until all these pipes are fixed and the infrastructure is fixed, we're always going to have bad water. And coming up tonight at 6, you'll hear from a Flint resident who says the Flint water crisis gave her a condition that will stay with her for the rest of her life. Reporting live and local in Flint, James Felton, WNEM TV5. All right, James, thank you. The decisions that led to the Flint water crisis started in March of 2012 when Genesee County announced the construction of a new pipeline to deliver water from Lake Huron to Flint. The plan would reduce costs by switching the city's water supplier from the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department to the Carignandi Water Authority. On April 25th of 2014, the city made the switch to the Flint River. But that water wasn't properly treated with corrosion control, causing lead to begin leaching from pipes into the water people use for bathing, drinking, and cooking. In the months that followed, residents complained about the water's odor, taste, and appearance, reporting rashes, hair loss, and other health concerns. In September of 2015, a group of doctors urged the city to stop using the Flint River after finding high levels of lead in children's blood. State regulators insisted the water was safe. But just days later, then-Governor Rick Snyder acknowledged there was a problem and pledged to take action. Fast forward to January of 2016, Snyder declared a state of emergency in Flint on the same day federal officials confirmed they were investigating the water crisis. Then governor asked the federal government for help while the state National Guard started distributing bottled water and filters to residents. In October of 2019, in response to the situation in Flint and other cities, the EPA proposed its first major revision in two decades of federal regulations for lead in drinking water. It included new requirements for local water systems and added procedures to replace lead service lines in areas where lead content was above allowable levels. And just last month, a Genesee County judge gave final approval to a major settlement in the water crisis. The state and other defendants agreed to pay a grand total of more than $600 million. The agreement establishes a court-monitored victims' compensation fund, providing direct payments to impacted residents.